we will get these rash of media accounts every time there are deaths. And of course, they always blame the social workers and doctors and police officers and others. But does anyone honestly think that these frontline professionals wanted a child to die? No, they missed obvious clues. They didn't know what they were looking at. They didn't know how to ask the right questions. Now, that's the bad news. The good news is we are so markedly better than we were a quarter of a century ago, but we have relied almost exclusively on on-the-job training. We've done a woeful job at every medical school, every law school, every graduate psychology school, every seminary, every undergraduate institution in our country in training people what to recognize, right? And so we turn them out and they make egregious errors and then we blame them for being ignorant when we graduated them with ignorance. We're the second regional child protection training center in the nation. There's now five. And we're trying to work on two levels. One is to train future professionals who are going to be working with children, future social workers, teachers, um, help them to understand more about child abuse, to recognize the signs and symptoms, to know uh, how to report, to know what the law is. And then the second part is to train the current professionals uh, and provide them really hands-on experiential training that will give them the skills to investigate, prosecute, do forensic interviews with children, and hopefully, of course, to treat and prevent child abuse. One of the things we do at the uh, training center here at New Mexico State University is to teach professionals how to process a crime scene. So this is a mock crime scene set up uh, based on a set of actual uh, fact uh, patterns. And so we instruct folks, uh, everything should be paid attention to, everything should be processed uh, beginning on the exterior of the house. It may be as simple as violent drawings uh, by a child. You should always have uh, your antennae up. This is our crime scene. We're walking through it as an officer, maybe. I had come up and asked her for food, that I was hungry. And from there, she told me it's rude to interrupt. So she hit me with a beer bottle. The beauty of this is, whatever errors you make, this is a safe place to make them, because whatever errors you make in this scenario, nobody's actually going to die. This is our child's bedroom. Uh, this child perhaps is not being fed very well, and she, in the middle of the night, or whatever the scenario may be, is going to look for food and is hiding it here in the closet. What's really important, though, is that we're increasingly understanding with research that where you find one form of maltreatment, you find multiple forms. So it's critical when you find one form to cross-grain for multiple. I felt something wet dripping on my and then finally she was done. I was, I went to the bathroom. 66% of the time a child abused in one way is abused in at least two ways, and about 30% of the time a child abused in one way is abused in five or more ways. 